Hello and welcome to the ultimate armor statues guide for Minecraft Java. If you don't have the Vanilla Tweaks data pack installed, or you don't have the armor statues book, check out my earlier video and I'll put a link at the top of the screen and in the description. This guide will take you through every section of the book one by one, and you can use the chapters to navigate through, you can pause and replay, and of course, you can like and subscribe to see more. Let's get started. First things first. You need the book in your hand, and you also need to have an armor stand in front of you, waiting to be used. Once the book's in your hand, you click near the armor stand, not on the armor stand, and you right click to open up the menu, and we're greeted with all the different sections. As I said, I'm going to go through each one of these, one by one, and you can use the chapters to navigate through as you wish. In styles, you have six basic options. I will go through each one and you can see what it does. So show base plate. All the armor stands have a base plate to start. You click no. The base plate disappears. You can go back into styles, show arms. And there you go, it has arms. Now the important thing about arms is it needs to have arms to hold something. Small stand. Default is set to no. If you click yes, he shrinks. Little baby armor stand. Back to styles. Apply gravity. Now this one's really important. If you are doing a design up in the air, or if you plan to drop your armor stand halfway into the floor, you need to make sure this is no. By default, I always click no, just in case. Uh, if you're 100 blocks up in the air, you're doing a bird, you're doing something like a paraglider, you forget to click no, your armor stand sinks all the way down and you have to either make a new one or you have to go and get it. Always click no. Next one, you've got stand visible. Now this is pretty an obvious one, but if you click no, the stand disappears, but the item in its hand stays where it is. Now that's really important when you're doing certain designs so that you can hide the armor stand yet see the block that you've put in place. The last one is display name. Now if you click yes, it will show you the name of this. Now you can use name tags to change that name and it'll always appear even through a wall like that. Okay, on to the next one. The next section of the book is nudge. Now you have three options. You either have the straightforward nudge positions and these are all relative to the world itself or you have relative aligned. Now these are relative to yourself and you also have relative exact and these are relative to yourself again but they take into account the direction that you're facing and that may not always be exactly in line with the grid. And what I mean by that is if you were facing a diagonal and you wanted to nudge it in a certain direction, it wouldn't stick to the grid. It would actually move exactly diagonally to the way you're facing, as opposed to relative aligned, which moves relative to the actual grid itself. So for example, in our world here, I will click F3 Using the debug screen, you can see, and I'll highlight this on screen, that you can see that we are facing north towards negative Z. If you turn positive X, positive Z, negative X. You also have positive Y upwards, negative Y downwards. Now using that, negative Z is away from us, so you can nudge that negative Z and it will move away from us. Now if you move diagonally and you nudge that minus Z exact, it will go away from us, but it will go along the diagonal, as I said. Now Z and X on the aligned, X is left to right, Z is back and forwards. So if I was to move relative aligned minus X, it would move to the left, like so. But as I said, it is aligned to the grid, not to the exact position, which would be negative x relative exact. Now, this is all a bit fiddly. What I suggest is you only stick to the top section to start with. That is a good, good fail safe way to get started. Now, if you are doing really intricate designs, you can start using relative exact to kind of tweak it here and there and uh, get a feel for it. 
The next section is rotation. In rotation you have a number of degrees. So 45 is a one-eighth turn because 90 degrees is one quarter turn and you also have smaller increments 15, 5 and 1. Now setting the rotation here you click on it and then you can use that rotation by either clicking left or right like so or rotate it the other way. You also have the option to rotate 180 degrees either toward yourself or away so away will rotate it 180 degrees all the way to the other side. You see that spin? And we can also rotate that back towards us. Now you also have the option to change the pointing. Now I don't use this myself, uh, but let's see what it does. So let's move the head to the feet. And you can see now he is looking at his feet. To be honest, as I say, I don't use this one ever, but I say just experiment. See what it does, see if you want to use it, but it's there if you need. Okay, so presets. Um, presets, I'm going to change the style and I'm going to show the arms. And let's see, let's change the base plate to make that know. Now with presets, you get uh, a long, nice long list of standard positions for your armor statues. So for example, attention is a good one to use because all of the joints are absolutely straight. You can use this for soldiers in your medieval castle, or you can use it to make sure everything is aligned uh, perfectly at 90 degrees. You also have walking. You also have running. And there are many others along this list, and I suggest you just go through them just to see what they do. Like face palm, really useful one. He's either tired from a run, or he's uh, exasperated because something's happened. Uh, but you also have these two at the bottom, uh, block and item. Now, if, for example, you use block, you'll notice that the arm is twisted in a particular way, and that means when you give him a block, the block will be perfectly lined up with the grid in the world. Now, that is really useful if you're making uh, little mini blocks um, or just doing maybe a, a bigger structure where you need to start with an alignment in line with the Minecraft world. Now you also have this option, which is presets and item. And what this does is it makes the item perfectly aligned to the world, just like the block, but in item form now. So if I was to, for example, change the preset back to block. Now this is at a quite funny alignment, slightly angled uh, right to left there. And, you know, based on what you're using, you might want to start either from block or item. Now the next one, I'm going to go back and uh, put the arms on again. Now, pose adjust to me is a bit of a trial and error area. Um, if you look in here, there's a lot of pluses, a lot of minuses on different axes. And to be honest, you do very well to remember each one every time. But know that if you do a minus on the first trial and error, you can use a plus to reverse that back. Uh, everything is reversible as long as you follow your steps. Now, firstly, the rotation figure based in the rotation tab is the level of rotation that will be that will happen uh, when you click that pose adjust. So if I go for something medium like 15, 15 degrees, I can then click in pose adjust and I'm going to move my head downwards. Now I know that's the x-axis because I've used that one a lot. I can do minus and then my head will tilt down 40, uh, 15 degrees just like that. I can then move that back if that's not quite correct by plussing and it moves back. Really trial and error, just keep trying each different ones, see what it does and then maybe do another one like that and just keep going. Okay now we've got a section to be honest I don't use very often uh, but I probably should. We've got auto align. So auto align we've got block on surface. So let's start by going to styles Let's put the arms in place. Let's give it a block. Uh, let's put the pose adjust, uh, not pose adjust, let's put the presets to block, like so. And let's give it a try. So we are going to, uh, and we're also going to turn off the gravity. And let's give it a try. So auto align, block on surface. And there you go. It automatically makes your armor stand invisible. It automatically puts it in the middle of the square, ready to be moved. So 
Ah, yes, this happens. Uh, ah, careful when you are clicking, because you can quite easily give your book to the armor stand, and if you've made your armor stand invisible, it may be tricky to get it back. Anyway, we've got it back. Right, uh, so... Ah! Okay, now the next section I use quite a lot. This is the swap slots. Now, swap slots initially uh, just sounds limited to main hand to the off hand. Uh, so you can give him, say, a shovel in one hand and then swap it. Or you can put an item in his hand and then move it onto his head. Now, I've put in some videos, uh, one, for example, like a bed. So if, for example, you were to give this armor stand arms, like so, give him a bed, you can then swap slots, put it on the head, and depending on the item, you now have a mini bed. Slightly smaller than the original version, which can be quite a cute little baby bed. Okay. Now, taking that idea a step further, we can give him a block, we can swap heads and put it on the head, and you notice now that is a bigger square than if I was to give him that in his hand. If I was to preset that to block, I now have two different sizes of blocks. If I have a block like this, I now have three different sizes of blocks. Now using that, I could make an intricate design uh, because I've got lots of different sizes to choose from. Now that's not all. If I have another armor stand and I make that uh, with arms, I give him that block. I uh, change that to a small stand and I swap that to his head and give him another one and put him in the block position. If you notice I now have five different sizes of blocks to use in any of my models and your imagination can run wild. Now the next section does exactly what it says on the tin. If I was to, for example, put some arms on here, if I was to use a preset such as arabesque, I get a rather dainty little thing. Now, notice the legs. I've got the left-hand side running backwards. Now, if I wanted the right-hand side to match that, I would go to mirror and flip. I would mirror, I would legs, and I would, what was it? Left, left to right. And now, I have somebody that's flying. So you can quite quickly use a preset, use the mirror, and make something different. And you, I'm sure you can use that. Now, one of the next ones is really useful. This is the utilities option, and we have the ability to copy, paste, lock, unlock, seal, and unseal. Now, copy and paste is uh, exactly as it says. So if, for example, I was to put the style, I was to make him a small, I was, uh, say for example, put 45 degree, tilt on the head I've got something that took a couple of steps and I maybe I want to repeat that over here well if I use copy on here and you can see it highlights it to say that it's got it I can then come over to another armor stand click paste and it'll paste it I can come to another one paste and the last one paste now you notice there I moved and it did the next one really important when you do a command you wait. So I should styles, stand visible, wait till it disappears. Now the last thing in this book is uh, really important and that is check target. Now if you are working with lots of armor stands all in close proximity you might want to work with this one but actually this one's closer. Which one does the armor statues book actually impact? If I go to check target it will highlight the one that I'm targeting. Now, I can then use that ability to lock, to lock that one, so that I can focus on this one. And say, for example, I want to do that N one, I can lock this one as well. That's now locked, and even though I'm standing over here, really far away, check target, it will go to that one. That way, you can control each one. Now, say I want to go to the middle one again, I can come back to this one, lock it, come to the middle one, and if you're in the right place, you can unlock just the middle one. Then you can move around, and you can do your commands to the middle one again. I am not a developer, 
um, I would have absolutely no idea where to start. So I wouldn't be anywhere without any of these people. We've got the original concept by uh, PHSS Bok. I don't know how to pronounce that. You've got Vanilla Tweaks, Integration by M Space Dev, Development and Improvements by Muki Tanuki. They are awesome people. They have made all this possible. Now go out, do some armor statues, see what you can create. Now with armor statues, you can create some seriously, seriously cool things. I'm just going to have a few things popping up that I've done in the past. A uh, few things that are on my YouTube channel. Um, maybe get some inspiration from this. Uh, check out Reddit, there's tons of ideas on there. You can really let your imagination go wild. Now with any of these designs, you need to have patience. You need to have a lot of patience because doing these little tweaks is fiddly. But it is totally worth it. These armor stands put a serious amount of life into your builds. And I think they look really cool. So on that tab, you've also got um, item on the surface, which just drops it down onto the floor. Now, if that was a gold nugget, for example, that would put that gold nugget on the floor as well. You also have auto align item flat on the surface. Ah. Maybe don't try that one. 